Good morning everyone. It is Tuesday morning, the 26th of May. It's another bright and glorious day and we're going to read together from God's Word. We're going to read Acts chapter 18 together. This is God's Word. Then Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently arrived in Italy with his wife Priscilla. They had left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all the Jews from Rome. Paul lived and worked with them, for they were tent makers just as he was. Each Sabbath found Paul at the synagogue, trying to convince the Jews and the Greeks alike. And after Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul spent all of his time preaching the word. He testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed and insulted him, Paul shook the dust from his clothes and said, Your blood is upon your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will go and preach to the Gentiles. Then he left and went to the home of Titus Justus, a Gentile who worshipped God and lived next door to the synagogue. Cyprus, the leader of the synagogue, and everyone in his household believed in the Lord. Many others in Corinth also heard Paul became believers and were baptised. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, Don't be afraid, speak out, don't be silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack or harm you, for many people in this city belong to me. So Paul stayed there for the next year and a half, teaching the word of God. But when Gallo became governor of Achaia, some Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him before the governor for judgment. The people accused Paul of persuading people to worship God in ways that were contrary to our law. But just as Paul started to make his defence, Gallio turned to Paul's accusers and said, Listen, you Jews, if this were a case involving some wrongdoing or serious crime, I would have reason to accept your case. But since it is merely a question of words and names and your Jewish law, take care of it yourselves. I refuse to judge such matters. And he threw them out of the courtroom. The crowd then grabbed Suthanus, the leader of the synagogue, and beat him right there in the courtroom. But Gallio paid no attention. Paul returned. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that and then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and went to nearby Cancuria. There he shaved his head according to Jewish custom, marking the end of a vow. Then he set sail for Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. They stopped first at the port of Ephesus, where Paul left the others behind. While he was there, he went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. They had asked him to stay longer, but he declined. As he left, however, he said, I will come back later. God willing. Then he set sail from Ephesus. The next stop was at the port of Caesarea. From there he went up and visited the church at Jerusalem and then went back to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul went back through Galatia and Phagaria, visiting and strengthening all the believers. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well, had arrived in Ephesus from Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the ways of the Lord and he taught others about Jesus with an enthusiastic spirit and with accuracy. However, he only knew about John's baptism. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained the way of God even more accurately. Apollos had been thinking about going to Achaia and the brothers and sisters in Ephesus encouraged him to go. They wrote to the believers in Achaia, asking them to welcome him. When he arrived there, he proved to be of great benefit to those who, by God's grace, had believed. He refuted the Jews with powerful arguments and public debates. Using the scriptures, he explained to them that Jesus was the Messiah. Amen. And that's the end of Acts chapter 18. Again, just another little part in the story of Paul. Uh, know a little bit about some of his journeys, where he's been to, uh, the opposition that he encountered, but also the encouragement that he found. I have to say that um, over this time, whenever we've been in lockdown, lots of people have been encouraging me. And just let me say thank you for that. 
Because, you know, it's hard at times keeping going. We all know that. And it's hard whenever you're trying to do things which are out of your, your normal or different. Even in the like of this and, and doing the streaming. So encouragement goes a long way. So thank you, everyone, for your words of encouragement. This is a long time for us to be in isolation. Um, we're still in it for the long haul. Um, it's not going to lift in a hurry. Yes, England are talking about opening shops and all again. Northern Ireland will do something slightly different. We'll do it at a different time scale, probably. And it's going to take time for a new normal pattern to establish. So it's a time for us all to encourage one another. For us all to look out for each other and just keep that contact. But, you know, be encouraging. It, it's easy to be critical at times. It's easy to pick fault. It's easy to see and to say to people, oh, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. But let's try and spin that around, turn it around and look at the good and look at the positives and look at how we can encourage others who are around us to stay strong, to stay firm, to stay rooted in the Lord and to keep going. That's what it's all about. That's sustainability um, of how we keep going in difficult times. So let's pray for that this morning. And let's pray for our glorious day um, and for our collection this morning for Food Bank and for church as well that everyone stay safe. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for our glorious and wonderful day. Thank you again for your provision of food, of clothes, of roofs over our heads. Lord, you're, you are a great and a wonderful God and we just thank you for that. Lord, in these days, help us to encourage one another. To encourage one another in you, in our faith, to keep going. To encourage one another just in practical terms, Father, as well. As friends struggle maybe with businesses, um, as people struggle with just being in the house, Lord, just help us to encourage. Help us to look out for those little cracks or chinks in somebody's armour um, where things are not going maybe the way they should do. And help us to come alongside and just, just to be there with them to walk through this. Lord, as we meet again this morning in church for a collection for food bank and for our church envelopes, just keep us safe, we pray. Keep everyone safe as they come and go. Uh, may it just be a, a time again of, of a few conversations, a time to chat, kind of catch up in a safe way. Uh, but may it just lift the hearts of all who are involved, Lord. And then may the gifts that we bring for Food Bank be used in a way that will that, that will they'll open doors for you. A way which will touch hearts as people realise that um, you love them and care for them. As, as these practical gifts are brought to them. So Lord, thank you and continue with us now, we pray, this day in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining with us again this morning. And again, God bless, stay safe and chat to you soon. Bye.